if countries were people, the relationship between China, America and Taiwan would be a love triangle like no other. China claims Taiwan as its own. But with America's support, Taiwan has been able to fend off the mainland's advances. I miss you. China! No! Say yes to Taiwan! We are an independent country. We have the military and, and we have elections. But as China becomes stronger, it's also becoming more impatient. If China tries to take Taiwan by force, it could lead to war with America. These are two nuclear-armed countries. It's kind of an unimaginable horror, but it is a risk. And, you know, maybe sooner than we think. Taiwan is located just 100 miles off the Chinese coast. But it's not just the Taiwan Strait that separates them. The island's official status is a hotly contested issue. For people in Taiwan and for most of the world, Taiwan is an independent country. But as far as the Chinese government is concerned, Taiwan is a renegade province which must be reunified with China. For the past 70 years, the threat of American military intervention has ensured that didn't happen. There has been a long-standing agreement. China has claimed that the United States is destabilizing peace in the Taiwan Strait. The expectation is that America is at a minimum the security guarantor that if China invaded, they should expect the US 7th Fleet to turn up very soon, and that could be a war. This precarious standoff is a consequence of the unique role Taiwan has played in China's divided history. At the end of the Second World War, the defeated Japanese, who had occupied Taiwan for 50 years, were forced to give up control. Taiwan was handed back to the Republic of China, then a military dictatorship led by Chiang Kai-shek's Chinese Nationalist Party. But it was a short-lived union. Within months, China's civil war, which had been fought intermittently since 1927, ignited once more. Communist Chinese army is fighting the nationalist forces of Chiang Kai-shek. By 1949, Mao's Red Army had swept to victory. Deposing Chiang Kai-shek's military dictatorship and forcing the former leader and around 1.2 million of his anti-communist supporters to retreat to Taiwan. To the kind of grand gentry and aristocracy of mainland China, Taiwan was not somewhere they respected or liked at all. It is a backwater. And yet, because the nationalist regime under Chiang Kai-shek had to go somewhere, the last place that they could go to was Taiwan. Mao was preparing to invade Taiwan and crush the deposed leader once and for all. But then war broke out on the Korean peninsula. The communists had finally launched their undeclared all-out war of conquest. With the Pacific now the new front in the fight against communism, America formed an alliance with Chiang Kai-shek's regime and forced Mao to give up his plans for a Taiwan takeover. From Formosa, Chiang carries on his long and valiant effort to defeat the forces of communism. Emboldened by America's support, Chiang Kai-shek declared Taiwan as the one true Republic of China and vowed to return to retake the mainland. This is a really unusual situation. Everyone on both sides agreed that there was only one country called China. They just disagreed what it was. Was it a right-wing country called the Republic of China or a communist country called the People's Republic of China? Although no longer fighting face to face, Mao and Chiang Kai-shek were now in a battle for international recognition and legitimacy. Initially, Chiang Kai-shek's government held China's seat on the UN Security Council and was recognized by many Western countries as the only Chinese government. Our 
Our great socialist fatherland is in a bright and splendid morning. But as Mao's China became of increasing strategic importance to America during the US-Soviet Cold War, Chiang Kai-shek's influence diminished. In 1971, America allowed a UN resolution to recognize Mao's People's Republic as the one and only China. And after years of secret talks, in 1979, Washington shifted diplomatic recognition from Taiwan's capital, Taipei, to Beijing. The mainland would not allow two Chinas or one China and one Taiwan. They insisted on having one China. The One China principle became a bedrock of the communist regime. And most of the world no longer recognized Chiang Kai-shek's government. Unofficially, however, there was still strong sympathy in the West for Taiwan, not least from its ex-partner, America. But it was no longer quite so outspoken about its affection. The Taiwan's Relations Act is both the strongest promise that America still makes to Taiwan, but also it falls a long way short of a full defense treaty and a full promise that America will definitely protect Taiwan no matter what. America's lack of commitment led Taiwan to find another way to stand on its own two feet, through economic growth. Taiwan's small agricultural economy had already undergone rapid industrialization in the 1980s, its exports boomed. As economic growth surged on both sides of the Taiwan Strait, Taiwan and China let down their barriers. Initially, Taiwanese businesses set up factories on the mainland, reaping huge rewards. But as China's economy began to catch up, leaders in Beijing realized they'd found one way to break down Taiwan's resistance to merging with the mainland. It was the start of a long-term policy to woo Taiwan through economic influence. The Chinese government saw that this is a phenomenally useful opportunity to make the two economies so integrated that it will be economically suicidal for any government in Taiwan to try to uh, come into a kind of confrontation with China, which will therefore require the government in Taiwan to accept some form of unification with China. And so the Chinese Communist Party suddenly started to drop its kind of implacable hostility to everything to do with Taiwan. You saw direct flights, direct ferries, direct shipping, and a huge interconnection. But while economic ties tightened, cultural divisions between Taiwan and the mainland deepened. Political reforms in the 1980s led to the birth of the opposition party, the Democratic Progressive Party, or DPP, who supported an independent Taiwan. Just two years later, progressive Li Denghui, or Mr. Democracy, as he would come to be called, became the island's first Taiwanese-born leader. National Assembly elections in 1991 were hailed as Taiwan's first true democratic elections. Within a decade, Taiwan became a full-blown true democracy. And people in Taiwan are extremely proud of their democracy, and that is something which helped to define their sense of identity. Alongside democratization came a growing desire for a separate identity, much to the dismay of leaders in Beijing. In 1996, China used its military might to threaten Taiwan. And so famously in 1996, they launched these missile tests uh, off the coast of Taiwan to try and frighten the Taiwanese people into not voting for Li Denghui, who was uh, in their view, too much of a kind of pro-Taiwanese figure. I think it is a very bad mistake on their part to put the impact area so near to Taiwan. I deplore that decision on their part. America responded with the biggest display of military might in Asia since the Vietnam War. This made China aware of how difficult it would be to stop American forces assisting Taiwan. 
but China's attempts to meddle in Taiwanese affairs continued. Despite claims it wanted a peaceful reunification with Taiwan, in 2005 China passed an anti-secession law authorizing the use of force should Taiwan formally declare independence. That was meant to kind of intimidate the Taiwanese people, but it does intimidate some people, but it also makes the idea of unification with China all the more unattractive and, and just kind of plain weird to younger Taiwanese people. With the younger generation increasingly alienated from China, more recent attempts by Taiwan's government, even to just forge closer economic ties, have met with opposition. In 2014, the Sunflower Movement occupied Parliament to protest against a free trade deal with China. Well, for most people in Taiwan, they think that China has every right to have a one China principle. It just cannot include us and they simply will not accept the prospect of being part of a very hard authoritarian Leninist political system, whatever the economic benefits. So up to this point, the Chinese approach of using economic integration to achieve political unification has failed. Since the 1990s, a growing proportion of people in Taiwan see themselves as Taiwanese rather than Chinese. These views helped Tsai Ying-wen, the pro-independence DPP candidate, win election in 2016 as president of Taiwan. <laughs> and just three years later, events 440 miles southwest would create even more support for Taiwanese independence. In 2019, hundreds of thousands of people took to the streets of Hong Kong and battled with police to protest against Chinese encroachments on Hong Kong's freedoms. For many in Taiwan, including the president, it was a stark warning. The more that China shows its teeth and shows that it's not willing to tolerate even a semi-democracy in a place like Hong Kong, the more that the Taiwanese people think, what kind of promise of autonomy makes any sense for us? As voluntary unification looks increasingly remote, China has only its military might to fall back on. In 2020, the Chinese government released a propaganda video that appeared to show the Chinese armed forces conducting attacks on the US military base in Guam. It was a sign that China is considering the use of force far afield in order to prevent America coming to Taiwan's aid. Is America still able to deter China? Does the People's Liberation Army fear that it would lose a war and that America would turn up to defend Taiwan? That's now in real doubt. These are two nuclear armed countries. It's kind of an unimaginable horror. It should be impossible to imagine this not ending peacefully. But it is also impossible to imagine this Chinese government allowing Taiwan to drift away. I'm David Rennie. Beijing Bureau Chief of The Economist. To read our recent briefing on the dangers facing Taiwan and the rest of our coverage of Taiwan and China, click the link. And thank you for watching.